I guess let me kind of give you a little backstory on this project. As you probably realize by now, um, Rebecca started shooting this in 1997. And um, she found me in 2007. So I came along 10 years after she'd already been filming. So she, when we met, she was looking for an editor to finish her project. And so we had a meeting, and I loved her story. I thought it was great. And we connected. And the next day, she gives me a box of 200 plus hours of footage. And she's like, here you go. Have fun. And um, so I did. I, I spent six months going through all the footage and figuring it out. And I realized through all that, there was a great story there, but there were a lot of holes. And so I spent the last four and a half years kind of re-filming some interviews and filming new interviews and you know filming uh, like her running and filming the like dinner table scene, um, things like that to kind of tell the complete story. And also it was when I got all the footage, it was really just a story about her brother Paul. It was there was really no mention of her personal issues, her family issues, and you know that that made a good story and all. But I mean, as you guys have probably realized, the real story is Rebecca and kind of the whole family dynamic. So um, it was interesting. It was an interesting four and a half years putting this thing together and, and coming up with a plan that makes sense to people who are seeing it for the first time. So and. Um, do you know if I'm, having this, um, I'm thinking funding-wise, I mean, how, how are you paid to make such a film, especially if you've been working on it for such a long time? Is a lot of it Rebecca's footage? Or? Yeah, uh, a lot of it is, I mean, all, most of the stuff with you know her running around with Carl um, is stuff that she shot before I even came in the picture. And it was a passion project for her. So she's been funding this through her own pockets over, over 14 years. So... Um, um, sorry, there's a lot going on behind me right now. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't like we got a grant or someone funded us or some executive producer came along and gave us a bunch of money. It's really just kind of a labor of love for all of us, and I'm only getting paid, if ever, uh, if you know the DVD sells or it gets picked up by a network or something like that. So um, for me, it was it was my first feature documentary, and. I knew it was going to be a challenge, and I knew it would be something that it would be an incredible learning experience, and so I took it on. I didn't know it was going to take me four and a half years, but um, uh, it was worth it. So, um, so, yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm just going to, yeah. Sorry, I'm going to open the floor so other people are going to come up and have a can, question. Can you hear us if we shout from the back? Can you hear us? I can hear you kind of, you're cutting in and out a little bit, but just so, yell real loud. I'll get them up to talk and uh, put it. Something Thanks. I really want to ask. Yeah. <laughs> Given that Rebecca wanted to make a film about her brother, hi, I'm, uh, I'm uh, Polly. Um, um, I'm really interested to know how did you feel when you started to delve more into it being her story and this horrendous family story? How did she feel about you taking the film in that direction? You know, it was. Um it was an easy decision for me because I can see I could see how important this was to to the full picture of what was going on. So for me, a creative decision, it was very easy. But for Rebecca, it, um, I wouldn't say it was difficult, but it was something that she hadn't really thought about before, and so she had to kind of take a step back and rethink. Well, I spent the last year filming a movie, or, or the last ten years filming all this footage about my brother, and now we're going to be turning the focus around on me. So it took a second, but. Um, Thankfully, we had a few bottles of wine that night, and it made it a lot easier. <laughs> and um, the first thing that we did, we were actually we were at the Sundance Film Festival in 2010, and we had already done a full cut of the film with just being a call. And we were out, you know, drinking and having dinner, and she started telling me all these things, and it was the first time I heard any of these things, and it was like it completely blew my mind. So. Immediately, I go, this is the story, Rebecca. And so we kind of had a full conversation about it. And by the end of the dinner, she was on board. And then a week later, we got back and we shot that dinner table scene, which changed everything. Thank you for your question. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Sorry, we got another one. I, I have a question. Oh. Real quick. <laughs> Did you guys like the film? Yeah. 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 
not the easiest subject matter to take in, but uh, I know hopefully you guys have something out of it. Hiya. Um, I just want to ask you a question. Um, I was wondering how, because there's so many stories and so yes. many individual stories, how did you decide to organise it? How did you organise it into one continuous story? The short answer is, uh, it was hell. <laughs> but, um, I mean, there's probably 10 or 12, yeah, maybe even 15 versions of this film over time. Um, and so, we, I kind of realized while we were filming the reunion scene that it would kind of be a good way to uh, bookend, you know, you kind of start with the present, mm -hmm. dive back in time, and then kind of end with the reunion. And so we didn't even shoot the birthday scene until just last year. And so the original ending was just him going in, the door closing in, and cutting the black, and then it was over. But we felt like people were, were still, there were so many questions after that, like, well, how is he now, you know? And like a few cards just wouldn't cover it. So we went and we filmed that, that kind of 60th birthday scene, which is amazing in itself that he even got to 60 years old. Um, but it, it, was, it was a lot of trial and error, you know? There's so much footage. And you're just kind of laying it all out on the timeline and putting it together and going, you know, that works, or no, that doesn't work, let's start over. So, I mean, there's a reason it took four and a half years. And it really is just, you just have to dedicate, you just have to dedicate your time to it. You can't half-ass, you know, a project of this scope. You just really need to dedicate your life to it. And it sucks for my wife, who hated me for four years, because she never saw me. But um, we're, all, we're all happy that it's done now. And uh, it's the best we think it, it could possibly be, so. Oh, and also, I was the editor, producer, director, writer, or whatever. So one regret I have is not having someone creative. You know, Rebecca's creative, but someone who kind of knows film, like sitting in and giving me a second opinion. You know, it was really just me in the dark hole editing for four years. And it probably could have been done quicker if I had someone else telling me, no, that's not a good idea. You know? So having a team is important. Don't do it all by yourself. Thank you. Yes. Are you all filmmakers, or some of you? Um, yeah, there's a few filmmakers, and then there's a few um, people that have come from the homeless charities nearby. Uh, I've got another question. Sure. Yes. Um, yeah, just um, hi. Um, I'd like I like your uh, your movie, and I uh, was thinking I wanted to ask you beside your um, beside your working experience and beside your working experience and beside uh, that, that probably you develop some skills and stuff, what did it, what did it change in you personally? Because, uh, well, I believe every time you, you were writing a movie or, or, or you're shooting a movie, you, um, you know, you get into the uh, characters that you're close to. So maybe in this case, you, you get to know this kind of a weird, uh, guy uh, call and stuff so I was thinking I was thinking that it must change something in your in your point of view okay. in general yeah. so I was wondering what what sure. did it change personally as a person not just as a director sure uh, great question well you never know you look at people you know who may be homeless or who are talking to themselves or who just might not look quote unquote normal and you kind of brush them off or you don't give them a second thought. It's kind of normal to see one or two people around. And you know that's unfortunately that's kind of the the mentality that a lot of us have. Is it's just something that's it's over there and I'm over here and that's that. And diving into something like this, which is such an emotional roller coaster for the family and now me too. Um, it really does change your perspective, and the main reason that Rebecca wanted to make this movie was to show that her brother Paul isn't just this crazy guy, or this homeless guy, is that he's this person with a soul, and he's really funny, you know, and he's got a past, and, you know, he's got a memory, and, you know, he does have dreams, and he does have things that he likes, and he has his own talents, and, I mean, he's a normal human being who's just, you know, been dealt a bad hand of cards, and so, for me, it's it's changed everything, my perspective on everybody, you know. I don't just brush people off now. I know that everyone does have a story. I mean, I knew that in the past, but it's easy to just blow it off. So you can't, you can't help but put yourself in those people's shoes and, you know, 
and want to be there for them and want to help them. And I, it's definitely made me a better person working on this film. And, and I hope it makes people, you know, at least open up some kind of new perspective for anybody who watches it. So, good question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other ones? Uh, any questions? I've, I've got some. Hang on here. Yeah. Anybody else? So I'm not holding the limelight. Um, sorry. It's, hi, it's me again. Hey, um, <laughs> so, well done. <laughs> Seeing as um, this is part of the Homeless Film Festival, and this is what the whole you know the whole festival is about, it's about um, opening up discussions about homelessness and, and thinking about what can. How can we get these stories out? What? How are you going to use this? Are you going to use? Sorry, not how. Are you going to use this film in some kind of campaigning way? Yeah, absolutely. We um, we're already partnering with organizations across the U.S. and hopefully now in, in the U.K. and across the globe. Um, one of them is NAMI, which is National Alliance on Mental Illness. They they've been really strong allies, uh, helping do community screenings of our film and promoting it in their blogs and so on and so forth. And also, we're starting to get in with some homeless organizations in the U.S. Um, you know, being a part of the Homeless Film Festival was a, a definitely a cool thing for us to kind of reach out to the U.K. You know, homeless... Um, <laughs> that tiny dog has a really big voice. Um, Can we so, see him? Yes, yes. Sorry, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good to see what you hear. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Rockies. Okay, um, so, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is an advocacy film. You know, it's a film that has a lot of, you know, uh, it's very close to Rebecca, obviously, and her family, but it is an advocacy film. We need, we want to get get out there for people to see it and hopefully change the perspectives. And we're actually working with, uh, we're trying to work with the governor of South Carolina. They are the, of all the states in the U.S., South Carolina has cut the most funding from health care, or from uh, like mental health care uh, programs. And so we're trying to use this film to be like, uh, you know, there's a lot of people out there who need this funding, they need the support, they need these clinics. Um, and so. We're going to use it however we can. If you have any ideas, please yeah, well, good. send me an email and let me know. We want to work with everybody. Well, good luck because there's very similar things happening in Britain at the moment with a lot of um, funding to homeless oh. organizations. Are, are, you, are you from St. Andrews? Are you from St. Andrews? Yeah, so are you. Hey. Is it you? Yeah. 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 I don't know if you want to say anything about how your work's been affected at all. There's somebody, somebody here from um, one of the very well-known London... Oh, no, she's from... You I don't have to do I it. I work in fundraising, so I don't know too much about the policy, but it has def a lot of our hostels have been affected. Some of them have closed down. Um, so, yeah, it, we have been affected. Did you, did you hear that? No. Oh, well, she was <laughs> just saying how their funding's really seriously taken a hit and some of their... Mm -hmm services have had to close down and, and I think what's really great about your film is that it, it's very a very simple description of um, how most people who are homeless are the most vulnerable people in our society and um, you know we we absolutely have to work out ways to stop this being you know stop them being the people that are taking the brunt of, of uh, basically the, the banks yeah. Excesses. So um, we had a great thing on Monday where uh, I don't know if you've ever seen a film called Kathy Come Home, which was made oh, no. by uh, Ken Loach no. in the 1960s. And um, the producer was here, and he was just—he was so angry. He was standing on the stage, and he's just says, "You know, we made this film in the 1960s, and it's—it's—it's it's, it's now worse. Yeah. You know, and I don't know—I don't know—is homelessness a huge issue in the states? You know, it's always an issue." I'm not sure how it compares to the rest of, uh, you know, the modern world. I guess you can say I know that in the latest numbers I have are from 2009, uh, so they're probably a little outdated and they're probably worse now. But there's about 650,000 people uh, that are homeless in the United States, which you know is a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. And um, I think the biggest, the biggest change from 2008 to 2009 that was the most worrisome was the percentage of not only individuals, but the percentage of 
entire families who are now homeless has increased. You know, it's not just one member, member of the family. With this economic crisis, it's, it's putting entire families out on the streets. And so it's become an even worse problem, absolutely. You know, it's probably the same everywhere else. Well, I, I think your film will be a really, really powerful tool in trying to, you know, open people's eyes to the issue. So congratulations. That, I think thank so. thank well. you so much. You and know, if someone might call, um, she was lucky enough to have a, a dedicated caregiver being Rebecca, you know, and that's what it took. It took 14 years to get him to like a stable place, you know, he, he was at a stable place at one point and then he completely crashed again and he almost disappeared again. So it's, it's incredibly difficult with some of his mental illness to keep him on track and, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the people out there just don't have someone that cares as much as Rebecca does and, you know, I don't even know how you could fix something like that. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I mean, that was what I was thinking while I was watching your film. I was thinking about all the people that don't have somebody like Rebecca, and that must be the vast majority of people. Right. So it's great because it raises all these it raises all these questions and makes all these comments. So yeah. Oh. Well, thank you so much. For anybody? Anybody else? Anybody? No. Well, I'll, I'll say thank you. Can I say thanks yeah. very much for thank showing you so us your much. film? Thank you guys so much for coming. Um, if you guys, you know, if you guys could maybe. Tweet about the film or go on Facebook or whatever, and you know, a lot of the people know that you, you enjoyed it. You know, that's all we can ask. We're not asking to buy anything. We just want you know other people to see it. So yeah, we'll do. We'll turn it around so we can see us clapping. All right. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is the buy anyway. Thank you very much. On my screen. Yeah. Put the screen out. <laughs> Can you not see it all? I can see half of you. Oh. <laughs> so I've got, I've got wires attached, that's why I just... Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there oh, you go, that works. Give me a big wave, everybody. Bye. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kyle. Thank you. 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 It was, when I got all the footage, it was really just a story about her brother, Paul. It was, there was really no mention of her personal issues, her family issues. And, you know, that, that made a good story and all, but, I mean, as you guys have probably realized, the real story is Rebecca and kind of the whole family dynamic. So, um, it was interesting. It was an interesting four and a half years putting this thing together and, and coming up with a plan that makes sense to people who are seeing it for the first time. So, and do you know if I'm having this, um, I'm thinking funding-wise, I mean, how, how are you paid to make such a film, especially if you've been working on it for such a long time? Is a lot of it Rebecca's footage, or? Yeah, uh, a lot of it is, I mean, all most of the stuff with, you know, her running around with Carl um, is stuff that she shot before I even came in the picture. And it was a passion project for her. So she's been funding this through her own pockets over over 14. I guess let me kind of give you a little backstory on this project. As you probably realize by now, um, Rebecca started shooting this in 1997. And um, she found me in 2007. So I came along 10 years after she'd already been filming. So she, when we met, she was looking for an editor to finish her project. And so we had a meeting, and I loved her story. I thought it was great, and we connected. And the next day, she gives me a box of 200 plus hours of footage, and she's like, "Here you go, have fun." And um, so I did. I, I spent six months going through all the footage and figuring it out. And I realized through all that, there was a great story there, but there were a lot of holes. And so I spent the last four and a half years kind of refilming some interviews and filming new interviews, and you know, filming. Uh, like her running and filming the like dinner table scene, um, things like that to kind of tell the complete story. And also in years, so, um, um, <laughs> sorry, I just want to go out behind you right now. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't like we got a grant or someone funded us or some executive producer came along and gave us a bunch of money. It's really just kind of a labor of love for all of us and I'm only getting paid if ever, uh, if you know the DVD sells or it gets picked up by a network or something like that, so um, for me it was it was my first feature documentary, and 
I knew it was going to be a challenge.